Hi readers, Lee here. Welcome back to my channel, Lila Wanders and Reads, and welcome to a book haul video. <clears throat> the theme of this book haul is books that made me buy other books, all by the same authors, of course. Um, and funnily enough, the first book I almost didn't buy the book that I wanted to buy, but I'll tell you why I did. This Mexican Gothic by Silver, Silvia Moreno Garcia. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it, I think, four stars. This is like a gothic, as it says in the title, gothic horror. I love the character, um, Nomi, I guess is what it's called. And what I also really loved, and it's not here that I could find when I did a quick skim, but I think I found it on her social media or something. Sylvia Moreno Garcia created a playlist on Spotify for this book. And I knew she'd had a book coming out, but it was only part way, part way, partly on my radar. And when I looked at it in the store, at first, I wasn't going to buy it. That book is The Seventh Veil of Salome. But I picked up the book, and I looked in the back, and there's a playlist on Spotify that goes along with this book. I absolutely love that. I wish more authors would do that. One of the things that I do when I'm reading a book, when it mentions a song or an artist, is I ask Alexa to play that song or that artist for me, and so it really gives me vibes in that book. Some books have a lot of songs mentioned, so I can't keep up, but I like the idea that I can turn on this playlist while I'm reading this book and feel what the author wanted me to feel. So, what is this about? Let me grab my glasses. 1950s Hollywood. Every actress wants to play Salome, the star-making role in a big-budget movie about the legendary woman whose story has inspired artists since ancient times. So when the film's mercurial director cast Vera Larios, an unknown Mex Mexican ingenue, in the lead role, she quickly becomes the talk of the town. Vera also becomes an object of envy for Nancy Hartley, a bit player whose career has stalled and who will do anything to win the fame she believes she richly deserves. Two actresses, both determined to make it to the top of the golden age in Hollywood, a city overflowing with gossip, scandal, and intrigue, make for a sizzling combination. But this is the tale of three women, for it is also the story of the Princess Salome herself, consumed with a desire for the fiery prophet who foretells the doom of her stepfather, Herod, a woman torn between the decree of duty and the yearning of her heart. Before the curtain comes down, there will be tears and tragedy aplenty in this sexy technicolor saga. Oh, now I really do want to read it. Um, sorry for the reflection. I've got my phone right there. I'm glad I picked it up. Not only for the playlist, but now after reading that aloud, it sounds a lot more interesting and intriguing than I thought it was when I just looked at it in the store. Next up is a book that I read two years ago, and I'm going to tell you about it, and then I'm going to toot my own horn a bit. Um, that is The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. I really, this is the tootin' part, I really need to get back to doing written reviews, because if I say so myself, this is what I posted on Goodreads, and I think it's really good. Um, if you've not read it, I'll talk to you a little bit more about it, but this is my review of The Devil Takes You Home. <clears throat> I believed in God. I believe God didn't love me. Desperate to pay the bills and save his daughter and his marriage, Mario takes a job as a hitman. 
Tragedy strikes anyway, and it's never enough to pay the bills, is it? After blowing up what's left of his life, Mario agrees to one more job. A self-described barrio noir, Devil inserts a few standard horror tropes into the noir, noir genre, but the true horror lies not in monsters or things that move in the dark, but in loss so deep it cuts to the core. Mario's attempt to restart his life is futile from the start. $200,000 in the U.S. would never be enough. I rooted for him anyway. Iglesias' portrayal of grief is raw and real. Mario's anger at, and need for, God is relatable. With a grief so deep, you can either sink or try to stay afloat until you no longer want to drown in it. Okay, sorry. With a grief so deep, you can either sink or try to f stay afloat until you no longer want to drown in it. If this is Barrio Noir, give me more. I wrote that. Anywho, I loved The Devil Takes You Home. I loved the ending. I loved that it was a story about grief. It got a little supernaturally. My nose is itching. Um, the biggest criticism that I've heard about this book is that Iglesias peppers Spanish phrases throughout the novel. And this did not bother me the way it seems to bother some people. Um, I can uh, understand how for some people it may take them out of the flow of reading because if they don't understand Spanish. I don't understand Spanish either. Sometimes I would translate uh, on Google Translate. Sometimes I wouldn't. Um, years ago, I had a colleague who spoke Turkish. And he and his brother would talk either in front of us or on the phone. And their conversations was always a mix of Turkish and English. So this in Devil feels authentic to me. If they only spoke English or only spoke Spanish, then maybe it would be a little bit different, but it does not bother me. I thought it enhanced my appreciation of the book. And another new release, House of Bone and Rain by Gabino Iglesias came out this past week. It's billed as Stand By Me with a Haunted Obsidian Dark Heart. A group of young men seek vengeance after one of their mothers is murdered in a Puerto Rican slum. For childhood friends Gabe, Xavier, Tavo, Paul, and Bimbo, death has always been close. Hurricanes, car accidents, gang violence, suicide. Estan Estamos rodeados de fantasmas was Gabe's grandmother's refrain. Pardon my pronunciation. I don't speak Spanish. Um, we are surrounded by ghosts, but this time is different. Bimbo's mom has been shot dead. We're going to kill the motherfuckers who killed her, Bimbo swears, and they all agree. Feral with grief. Again, grief as a subject matter in this. Bimbo has become unrecognizable, taking no prisoners in his search for names. Soon, they learn Maria was gunned down by guys working for the drug king kingpin, kingpin of Puerto Rico. No one has ever gone up against him and survived. As the boys strategize, a storm gathers far from the coast. Hurricanes are known to carry evil spirits in their currents and bring them ashore. Spirits that impose their own order. <clears throat> I look forward to this. I love... I, I, I like the crime element. The crime element is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I love how he does um, pepper in the supernatural and... I look forward to reading this. Next up, I had read something by this author. It was a novel, a little book, or novelette, novella, um, called Pet by Akwake Emezi. And I thought Pet was okay. I don't know why I picked up you Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. I think it was the title. I think it's a beautiful title. And I adored this book. It's about very well-off people, but it is also a story about grief. And I fell in love with the writing style 
and the lyricism and the story. I just loved this book so much. I did not write a review on it. I'm not even sure when I read it. Um, but then when I saw that Akwake Emezi had come out with Little Rot, I tried to resist for a few minutes, but then I went right out and bought it. Aima and Kalu are a longtime couple who just split. When Kalu, reeling from the breakup, visits an exclusive sex party hosted by his best friend Ahmed, he makes a decision that will plunge them all into chaos, brutally and suddenly upending their lives. Ola and Soraya, two Nigerian sex workers visiting from Kuala Lumpur, collide into the scene just as everything goes to hell. Sucked into the city's corrupt and glittering underworld, they're all looking for a way out, fueled by des a desperate need to escape the dangerous threat that looms over them. So, I am not sure when I've got way too many books. I don't know when I'm ever going to be able to read them all. But, I, I persist. I can't wait to read that. If it is as good as their other novel, then I'm just in for a really good time. Finally, I'm not sure how long this video is. Oh, well. Finally, this next book was a three star. It got a little, the story got a little convoluted in places, but overall, I enjoyed the book, and I, I don't know if this is a debut or not. That is Burn the Negative by Josh Winning. I had a good time with it. I didn't tab anything. Um... No, he's written, he's a senior film, film writer at Radio Times. Um, he's a film journalist, yada, yada, yada. Anywho, I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it so much that I was going to go right out and buy Heads Will Roll when it came out this month, but... It was included in my Nightworms package, so I didn't have to go out and buy it. It came to me. This one is one that uh, it's got mixed media in it, text and more text. I look forward to this. I might read this when I finish James by Percival Everett. Willow's worst nightmare was being canceled, but the shadows in the wood woods of Camp Castaway might destroy more than her reputation. After sitcom star Willow tweets herself into infamy and stumbles blind drunk into a swimming pool, her agent ships her off to Camp Castaway. Nestled deep in an upstate New York, Castaway is a summer camp for adults who are desperate to leave their mistakes behind. No real names, no phones, no way to call for help. Willow's feller Fellow campers seem okay. Her own favorite actress is even here, making a s'more. And that jaded writer, Danny, j oh, and did that jaded writer, Danny, just wink at her? But the peaceful vibe is shattered when one of the campers vanishes, and Willow finds a mutilated doll's head in her room with a threatening message rolled up inside. Terror grips the group. Campers begin to lose their heads, literally, and disturbing past deeds come to light. Is Willow be about to get canceled all over again? This time for good? It's got a quote from I'm a cheer, but I'm a cheerleader in here. I am going to read this really soon. This just seems like a fun slasher type book. And that is it for my book haul. I did not buy these in one haul. These came were the course of several hauls and a package. Um, but I wanted to try to do something themed this time. If you've read any of these books, any of the old books or the new books, I'd love to hear what you think about them. I will definitely post some kind of response to... Heads will roll. I hope to get to it this week. And I'll keep you posted.
please hit me up in the comments if you've got any comments about any of these books. Were there any that you really enjoyed or some that you didn't? I'd love to hear from you. Happy reading!